A Baby Sister for Francis by Russell Hoban. Pictures by Lillian Hoban. It was a quiet evening. Father was reading his newspaper. Mother was feeding baby Gloria. Francis was sitting under the sink. She was singing a little song. Plankety, 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 plank. Here is the dish rag that's under the sink. Here are the buckets and brushes and me. Plankety, 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 plee. She stopped the song and listened. Nobody said anything. Frances went into her room and took some gravel out of her drawer. She put the gravel into a coffee can. She marched into the living room, rattling the can and singing. Here we go, marching, rattly bang. Please don't do that, said father. Frances stopped. She went back under the sink. Mother came in carrying Gloria. Why are you sitting under the sink, said mother. It's cozy said Francis. Would you like to help me put Gloria to bed? said mother. How much allowance does Gloria get? said Francis. Only big girls like you get allowances, said father. N May I have a penny with my nickel now that I am a big sister? said Francis. Yes, said father. Now you will get six cents a week. Thank you, said Francis. I know a girl who gets 17 cents. She gets three nickels and two pennies. Well, said father, it's time for bed. Father picked Francis up and gave her a piggyback ride to bed. Mother and father tucked Francis in and kissed her good night. I need my tiny special blanket, said Francis. Mother gave her the special blanket. And I need my tricycle and my sled and both teddy bears and my alligator doll, said Francis. Father brought in the tricycle and the sled and both teddy bears and the alligator doll. Mother and father kissed her goodnight again and Francis went to sleep. In the morning, Francis got up and washed and began to dress for school. Is my blue dress ready for me to wear, said Francis. Oh, dear said mother. I was so busy with Gloria that I did not have time to iron it, so you'll have to wear the yellow one. Mother buttoned Frances up the back. Then she brushed her hair and put a new ribbon in it and put her breakfast on the table. Why did you put sliced bananas on the oatmeal, said Frances. Did you forget that I like raisins? No, I did not forget, said mother, but you finished up the raisins yesterday and I have not been out of shopping yet. Well, said Francis, things are not very good around here anymore. No clothes to wear, no raisins for the oatmeal. I think maybe I'll run away. Finish your breakfast, said mother. What time will dinner be tonight, said Francis. Half past six, said mother. Then I will have time to run away after dinner, said Frances, and she kissed her mother goodbye and went to school. After dinner that evening, Frances packed her little knapsack very carefully. She put in her tiny special blanket and her alligator doll. She took all of the nickels and pennies out of her bank for travel money, and she took her good luck coin for good luck. Then she took a box of prunes from the kitchen and five chocolate sandwich cookies. Well, said Francis, it is time to say goodbye. I'm on my way. Goodbye. Where are you running away to? said father. I think that under the dining room table is the best place, said Francis. It's cozy and the kitchen is near if I run out of cookies. That is a good place to run away to, said mother, but I'll miss you. I'll miss you too, said father. Well, said Francis, goodbye, and she ran away.
Father sat down with his newspaper. Mother took up her knitting. You know, it is not the same house without Francis, said Father. That is exactly what I was thinking, said Mother. The place seems empty without her. Francis sat under the dining room table and ate her prunes. Even Gloria can feel it, said Mother. A girl looks up to a big sister. I can hear her crying a little right now, said Father. Father picked up his newspaper, then he put it down again. I miss the songs that Francis used to sing, he said. I was so fond of those little songs, said Mother. Do you remember the one about the tomato? What does that tomato say early in the dawn, sang Mother. Time to be all red again, now the night is gone, sang Father. Yes, he said, that is a good one. But my favorite has always been, when the wasps and the bumblebees have a party, nobody comes that can't buzz. Well, said Mother, we shall just have to get used to a quiet house now. Frances ate three sandwich cookies and put the other two aside for later. She began to sing, I am poor and hungry here, eating prunes and rice. Living all alone is not really very nice. She had no rice, but chocolate sandwich cookies did not sound right for the song. I can almost hear her now, said Father, humming the tune that Francis had just sung. <laughs> she has a charming voice. It is just not a family without Francis, said Mother. Babies are very nice. Goodness knows I like babies, but a baby is not a family. Isn't that a fact, said Father. A family is everybody all together. Think how lucky Gloria is to have a sister like Frances, said Mother. I agree, said Father, and I hope that Gloria turns out to be as clever and good as Frances. With a big sister like Frances, she will turn out fine, said Mother. I'd like to hear from Frances, said Father, just to know how she is. I'd like to hear from Frances, too, said Mother, and I'm not sure the sleeves are right on the sweater I'm knitting for her. Hello, called Frances from the dining room. I am calling on the telephone. Hello, hello, this is me. Is that you? Hello, said Mother. This is us. How are you? I am fine, said Francis. This is a nice place, but you miss your family when you're away. How are you? We are all well, said Father, but we miss you too. I will be home soon, said Francis, and she hung up. Francis said that she'll be home soon, said Father. I think I'll bake a cake, said Mother. Frances put on her knapsack and sang a little traveling song. Big sisters really have to stay at home, not travel far away, because everybody misses them and wants to hug and kisses them. I'm not sure about that last rhyme, said Frances as she arrived in the living room. That's a good enough rhyme, said Father. I like it fine, said Mother, and they both hugged and kissed her. What kind of a cake are you baking? said Francis to Mother. Chocolate, said Mother. It's too bad that Gloria's too little to have some, said Francis. But when she's a big girl like me, she can have chocolate cake too. Oh, yes, said Mother. You may be sure that there will always be plenty of chocolate cake around here. The end.